is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the In My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're out here in the garden planting some strawberries. It's a beautiful day. It's only getting more beautiful as we get out here. So hopefully wherever you're at, the weather is turning beautiful. You're starting to experience spring because I'll tell you what, springtime in the garden is the best time. So uh, like I said, today we're planting some strawberries. I've got some dormant bare root plants here. Um, they're starting to come out of dormancy, so I got to get them in the ground. So I thought it'd be a really good opportunity for me to come out here and talk about planting strawberries and really go through some of the things that I wish I knew when I first planted strawberries. Now, we planted strawberries in a bed for the very first time about eight years ago, and I made a lot of mistakes. And a lot of those mistakes I've learned from and have since corrected, and I've had a lot of success growing strawberries. You can go back and watch some of our harvest videos and stuff like that. Really great success growing strawberries. And so I thought I'd kind of summarize everything that I made mistakes doing with my first bed, all the things that I've learned to really help you guys from not only making the same mistakes, but maybe just teach you guys something in the process. So let's go. So my first big mistake when planting strawberries was not picking the right varieties. I simply went to my local big box store, was looking in their seasonal section. I saw a bag of dormant strawberry runners like this. I thought, ooh, strawberries, let's plant them. And I had no idea about selection. I planted them in my garden and they were very mediocre. Upon doing some further research, I realized that those varieties I planted didn't really do well in my area for a variety of reasons. And so doing your research and finding varieties that do well in your area and your climate is really gonna help you out to do so much better when growing strawberries. Certain varieties do better on the coast, certain varieties do better in warmer weather, certain varieties are, uh, they don't need to go dormant, they're known as everbearing, they're gonna give you fruit all season long. And then there's certain varieties like June bearing varieties, because there are two different varieties of strawberries, there's June bearing and everbearing. June bearing varieties, they go dormant, they only fruit one time, they go dormant, they need to go dormant in order to kind of reset that clock and start to fruit again. And so um, certain varieties will just do better in your area. And so I've kind of found over the years that my favorite varieties are Honey O, Jewel, and Sparkle. Those are my three favorite. There's also Galetta is another great one for our area. There's also um, another one that's um, a little lesser known, but it's called the Mara de Bois. And that one is a beautiful variety, absolutely delicious. A lot of people use that for, uh, for making strawberry jelly and jam. Uh, but just kind of doing your research and finding varieties that do well in your area is key. And I've always said going out to your local farmer's markets or going to like a U-Pick patch and seeing what they're growing. A lot of farmers are, they're very, you know, they're very open about the varieties that they're growing and none of them are like really hiding these secrets. And so all it takes is just kind of making some connections, talking to some people, and you're going to have varieties that are going to do way better in your area than just going out and making the mistake like I did and buying whatever the first thing I see is. Second mistake I made was not fertilizing enough. Now, when I first started growing strawberries, I just thought, I mean, it's just like a normal plant, right? Wrong. Strawberries are super heavy feeders. And so we're really prioritizing nutrients. In our strawberry beds, we will fertilize typically two, sometimes even three times a year with our strawberries. Now, the first two are gonna be your obvious ones. Those are gonna be your spring fertilizing and then your fall fertilizing. Your spring fertilizing gets them out of dormancy and gets them growing. That has a big priority on nitrogen because they use so much nitrogen. Even throughout the main growing season, they're gonna use tons of nitrogen. So focusing on nitrogen is key, but then we also focus on uh, root development and dormancy in the fall. Now you'll notice, you're probably thinking, holy cow, is he just talking and throwing? No, I'm not. They, I apply a ton of fertilizer to my beds. Now you can also use things like chicken manure. Chicken manure is great, it has tons of nitrogen, but that nitrogen is gonna leave the soil pretty fast. So I like to combine um, a really good amount of compost. A lot of, you know, we add compost and manure to this bed. That's gonna have a lot of nitrogen that's ready. It's gonna mend the soil, get the plants growing fast. But then I also use Trifecta Plus. That really gives them a, not only a fast feeding, but also a slower feeding as well throughout the growing season. And that way the plants are having tons of food to grow with throughout the growing season because they grow fast and they use tons of nutrients. What you'll find is if, if you're not fertilizing enough, the berries will get small, they'll get very pithy, they will not get very plump, and the plants themselves will be smaller and more anemic. What you'll find is that the plants will grow larger and larger every year, and they actually grow from a, from a crown, and that crown will actually kind of grow out and form almost like a strawberry bush. If your plant just looks like a teeny tiny little plant every single year and it's not growing and developing, you wanna check the nutrients. The second thing you wanna check is the soil. Now, the soil I had great from the beginning. I don't think my soil was a problem, 
But if your roots are not developing and your roots are not moving throughout the soil and, and developing fast, like I said, these, these are bare root. So these plants here are two year old plants and the roots on these suckers are massive, very well developed. If your roots are not moving throughout the soil and developing fast, your plants are gonna be smaller and more anemic as well. So make sure you have really good loose soil, but my biggest mistake was not fertilizing enough. All right, so the third biggest mistake that I made, and this was a really critical mistake that I made, and that was too many plants in a bed. When it comes to spacing, you want to give your, your strawberry plants room to grow because as they grow, they're going to produce what's called runners. Runners are free plants. You don't have to buy them. They just produce them. And the mother plant, being the older plant, will produce two or even three runners, and they will actually help to fill out your beds. Now, when I first planted my very first strawberry bed, I had a bed about the same size, but I want to say I planted about 200 little strawberry plants in that bed. Now, 200 plants is way more like uh, eight times more than you really should have. Um, I typically will plant in a bed of this size. A good planting is right around 60 plants in this 48 square feet here. And that's kind of just what I've found to be a good spacing for me. Obviously, if you have even more space, you can give them even more space. These beds are gonna fill out and, and really fill up pretty quickly with that spacing, but I find it works best for me and it's most efficient for me. But um, if you had more space, you could even give them a little bit more space than that. Um, but one square foot per plant is typically what a lot of gardeners will advocate. I have mine slightly closer than that. All right, so we just got all the strawberries planted and I wanna talk about the fourth thing that I learned with our strawberries and that was known as bed turnover. Now, when I first planted strawberries, I mean, I didn't even know what a good variety was, let alone bed turnover. So if you've never heard of the term bed turnover before, it's basically like crop rotation mixed with a combination of succession planting. And essentially what farmers will do when they plant out a, a patch of strawberries is they will plant out a patch of strawberries and then leave a patch that is basically, it's, they might put a cover crop on it or they might plant something else entirely, but it's not strawberries. And what they do is they plant basically a year later, another bed of strawberries. So this bed will go for the full season. It will overwinter. And then in the spring, they'll plant out that second area with strawberries. And what that will do is it'll have a one year lapse because I didn't know this when I first planted strawberries, but strawberries should be replaced about every four years. That's because as the plant starts to grow, it just gets tired over time and productivity will decline. And without doing things like bed turnover, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a bunch of plants that are maturing all at once, like we had here. <laughs> and then all the beds matured all at once, we tore them out to replace them. And then now we have like one or two years where we're not gonna have any fruit at all. Now we are planting for the future. So it's obviously something, you know, we're planting with the expectation that these beds are gonna produce for us in a year or two and it'll be fine. But had I had that, had I had that bed turnover in my mind and not made that mistake, I could replace this bed while this bed is on its fourth year. And then when this bed is done, this bed has already been planted out and this bed is already on its second year. And so this bed will be producing when this bed is one year and it's not gonna be producing. And so there will always be kind of, there'll be about two years of amazing productivity. And then every other year will be kind of a popcorn year where one bed's producing, one bed is finishing up producing. And that is a massive lesson that I learned that I wish I would have known from the beginning because it really would have changed the course and how I done things. And also I wouldn't be in the predicament that I'm in right now where I have two beds that are bare. And now uh, because I do really want two beds of strawberries, I'm probably gonna plant both out, but I might just allocate another bed for my third bed because we love strawberries so much here and we, we use them in so much of our, of our food. We, we make uh, jams, jellies, we make pies, we eat them fresh, we throw them on strawberry shortcake. It's like, it, we are a strawberry family. And so I'll probably allocate three beds for strawberries. And so um, I'm gonna plant both of these beds out with strawberries, but ideally what you want is you want a third bed or a second bed to have as kind of that, that changeover. So when these beds are needing to be ripped out, you have a bed that is producing. That way you never go without strawberries. All right, now the fifth thing that I learned with growing strawberries is bird protection. Now the first couple years, the birds would just come in and we'd be lucky if we even got a couple strawberries to mince on. When your plants are young like this and you only get a few fruits, preserving those fruits is key if you want even a snack. But especially once those plants start producing and you start getting a lot, you really wanna make sure that you don't encourage other you know, 
pests and animals to come in and start feeding because that can start a feeding frenzy, especially with birds. And so what we found is using a combination of decoy rocks. We actually did a video on decoy rocks. We basically just painted little red rocks. We put, uh, we put little green tops on them, red bottoms. We placed them near the plants as the fruits were ripening. So when the birds would come in and peck the rocks, they would realize they're not a fruit. And over time, that would have negative reinforcement to where when the fruits were ripe, they were not found pecking the fruits because they thought they were rocks. And so the birds would just go elsewhere. We'd have all the strawberries to ourselves. That was a really, really amazing thing that we learned. And then also using things like bird netting. Uh, we would drape bird netting over top of our young plants. Um, and that would really keep things like squirrels and birds away so that we had more fruits for ourselves. All right, and the sixth and final thing that I learned, which I actually learned later on, and so that was mulching. Now what you'll notice is that if you look back at our previous years, you'll notice we didn't really mulch. The plants were kind of a living mulch, but we really should have mulched in the beginning. So what we're gonna do right now is after we're done, we're gonna water these beds in really well, and then we're gonna mulch it with our favorite mulch, which is our, uh, our shredded pine shavings, like our, our animal bedding material. We use those to mulch our garlic in the winter, but we also should be mulching our strawberries. The reason why is because strawberries love moisture. The more moisture, the better. And that's because strawberries, the fruits, are like 90%, 95% water. If your beds dry out, your, your strawberries are gonna be very small and very dry, and they're not gonna produce as much. But also, what we find is that the strawberries that sit right on the soil, because they're a soft-bodied fruit, what happens is the soil would heat up. And when it would heat up, it would actually bake and actually cause the strawberries to rot. Whereas the strawberries that were sitting on cool, uh, cool mulch, we went to a couple of pick farms and noticed that the strawberries that were sitting on bare soil did the same thing that happened in our garden. And we made the connection, well, if the strawberries that are sitting on mulch are nice and plump and protected from the heat, that could be the reason why we're having so many strawberries get rotten, is the strawberries that formed and hung up in the air that were not touching the soil, they were fine, but the strawberries that formed low to the ground and sat on the soil, those were the first ones to rot. Those were the first ones to get eaten by ants. Those were the first ones to get, you know, baked from the sun and end up suffering from things like sun scald. And so mulching is really gonna be something that we're gonna do heavily here. And we're gonna use the, like I said, the pine shavings. And that is the sixth and final big lesson that I learned. There's a lot of other teeny tiny little lessons, but those are the really big ones that I learned that I think you guys could benefit from. So we're gonna get these watered in really well and then we're gonna put a mulch down to protect them. And then, uh, yeah, and then you'll see these beds kind of develop and grow. I don't, have, uh, I don't have strawberries yet for our second bed, so we'll be planting those out at a later date, but we're gonna have these two beds planted out, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have strawberries within the next year or two. So I thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a thumbs up there. It really helps spread this video around to other people. YouTube loves to see your engagement. Also, um, let me know in the comments box below if you learned something or some mistakes that you might have made that you won't make going forward and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, that's a good idea. Gardening is just getting started. So we have lots more gardening content coming out and uh, I don't ever get bored of this. So you can rely on regular, regular uploads to this channel. And I thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow bigger. Take care guys. Bye.